powered by passion. It's National Auto Care's Fixed Ops 5 with your host, National Fixed Operations Training Manager, Corey Smith. Welcome to Fixed Ops 5. I'm your host, Corey Smith. Alongside me today, I am honored with Russell Hill, who is the co-founder of Fixed Ops Marketing. Russell, thanks for being a part of the show today. You know, Corey, thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Glad to be well, here. We've got a, a really good topic uh, for this episode. But before we get into it, um, Russell, uh, tell me what Fixed Ops Marketing is or what they do. Well, what we essentially do is uh, we, we're, we're pulling uh, dealerships' websites for uh, service parts and accessories out of the 20th century and pulling them into the 21st century and uh, educating consumers with options, ways to convert, and through video technology. All of our coupons have embedded videos to explain those premium services types of things. Wow, that's really yeah. cool. I, I like that a lot. So that's, that's, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, so today's topic, we're really going to talk about marketing to that customer. And with the chip shortage that's going on right now in the market, how can dealerships make up that lost revenue? Because eventually they're going to run out of cars to sell, correct? Well, they are. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's, it's really getting ugly now. Uh, if, you were, if you're a GM or, or owner of a store the last few months, uh, you've made uh, probably historical profits. Uh, and fixed operations is doing really well too. But things are fixing to change and it's going to be well into 2022 before things start to turn around, and come back. I was recently talking to a friend of mine. Normally, he's a fixed ops director at a, a big Ford store in Florida, and they normally stock 12 to 1400 units, you know, a, a 90 wow. day supply. OK, they got six units on the ground. Wow. Uh, and so they don't have anything left to sell. They're doing all they can, just like everybody is for used cars, pulling used cars. And they're all paying through the nose for it. But fixed operations is doing is flooded right now. Uh, it's summer. Uh, COVID restrictions are lightening up. Uh, people are wanting you know people want to get out and travel and do things. So naturally, they're bringing their their cars in for service. So we we need to be ready for the onslaught, and it's already started. So you think that lost revenue can be made up into the service department itself? I absolutely do. Uh, through, through many different channels, probably, you know, we could talk for hours on all the different ways they can do that. But mostly it's by finding things or doing things at the same time and increase efficiencies. Okay. Yeah. What can the dealer leadership team do to, to get more business? Um, is it, it, do they have, uh, you know, uh, a hot dog, you know, customer appreciation day where they do like a barbecue uh, is it uh, doing a mass mailer like we used to do back in the day? I mean, what, what in your mind can they do to get more business through the door? Well, this is my experience, okay? Um, I'm just going to spout some national numbers here. So I, I don't even think, at least right now, it's about getting more business. I think there's plenty of business coming through the service departments. At least, you know, I talk to dealerships all over the country. Mm -hmm. They're doing really well. That's not the challenge. The challenge is that 75% of people that are rolling into service department, particularly right now, are there for oil changes or oil change rotate and balance. Uh, I think it's imperative right now to focus on saving time, increasing efficiencies, but it's about creating more lines per RO with the existing clients that are coming in, not necessarily chasing inactive customers, et cetera, although that's fine and there's a time and place for that. Right now, it's like carpe diem, right? Seize the day. We have to do everything we can through training and other types of efficiencies and marketing to help educate the consumer and help the advisors and technicians in ways where they can, uh, you know, um, uh, upsell, you know, if it's inappropriate, not just to upsell somebody that doesn't need to be upsold. But I mean, you know, if, if you're doing proper MPIs and communicating with the customer and building the right kind of relationships, it shouldn't be a problem to, you know, 56% of all ROs are one liners with those 75, you know, percent of people that are coming through for all changes. So let, let's help them create an additional two or three lines. How's that? Yeah. If yeah. you can focus on one thing and that, I think that can start with, you know, training uh, right. that can start with, you know, doing some homework before next yeah. days of business, going through the next day's ROs today uh, and saying that, okay, 
these five customers haven't had an alignment in over a year. Right. I can talk to them about that. So when they do come in for that oil change and tire rotation, it's educating that customer. Exactly. Uh, okay. So I, I, I agree with that. I think that's so much more time well spent going with taking the customers that are already coming in. I love that. I, I love what you said there as, as opposed to you know, going out and getting lost customers or trying to send out a mass mailer, which can cost some money, right? Yeah. Well, it costs money, but think about it. it I'm not saying it's this way all over the country, but every it, it, with the dealerships that I'm talking to, they got plenty of people coming in and they go, well, Russell, we're not interested in more traffic. Let's, we can't even handle the people we got. I know, I know, I know. So let's focus on creating additional lines per hour. How can we do that? It's things that will save you time and increase efficiencies and help your advisors out uh, by helping educate the consumer. And one way to do that is through video technology. I mean, uh, Variable has everything. They have all the technology, <laughs> all the widgets. But if you look at websites today with service parts and accessories, it's like an afterthought. It's, right. I mean, there's, there's still pictures of scissors cutting out a dotted line or there's no <laughs> coupons there at all. Those aren't really educating the consumer. And there's a handful of, of coupons. But what about brakes and repairs and diagnostics and alignments and tires? Tires is a big thing. Tires yeah. is a huge thing, right? To stop that that bleeding that happens at 36 months where they start defecting, right? Right. No, I, th I think you're. I think you're right on, right there. Uh, before we wrap up this this episode, uh, wouldn't you agree that the past few years have changed the industry quite a bit, and and even this pandemic has changed the industry uh, lightning speeds from what I thought was going to happen. So how can a dealership really adapt to the new age customer, the, the Gen Ys? How do they communicate with those people and how do they get them to keep buying from them and speak their language in your mind? That's a, that's a great question, um, especially with all the younger people that are coming into the market. You, you, we need to, um, well, I, I would say that uh, after 36 years uh, in this business, that at any other single point in history, in my experience today, there's more technologies and innovative ways, some of which don't really do the fixed operation side of things uh, very good because it requires somebody to do something or multiple people to do something. So it doesn't really save time. And the next thing you know, that they're not managing it. It's not producing the results that they were. So I, I would say that it's really important today to pick and choose as fixed ops people, dealerships, et cetera, pick and choose. Uh, there's, there's Zoom. Everything has changed since COVID. Yeah. Everything. I'm gonna just, I, I, I took a few notes here. People have changed. Technology has changed. The economy has changed. Shopping has changed. The market has changed. And what people want and how they want it has changed in the last year and a half. I'm yeah. talking about from pickup and delivery to uh, antiviral, antimicrobial wipe downs, uh, first, first uh, responder, you know, type stuff. Um, these are things that we adapted to during COVID. They're not going away. Correct. They're not yeah. going away. So as dealers, uh, people, you know, like myself, I'm a vendor and I've been on the other side as well for 16 years running dealerships. There's a lot of there's a lot of technology out there. And here's what it boils down to, Corey. Three things. What is it? What does it do? What's in it for me? And right. I implore you to get enough information to be able to make a, a, an intelligent or informed decision about what you may say yes or no to. So I, I would say, uh, you know, you can't look at everything, right? You can't. Uh, you wouldn't get anything done. So look at the things that that save time and increase efficiency that don't require a, a lot of management through automation. Mm -hmm. No, I like that because sometimes, you know, the path of least resistance could give you more results. That's right. So I really, I really like where you're going with that is that, you know, find what works for you in your marketplace, uh, you know, and, and some, you can read some of those studies. I know JD power has a lot of them. Cox auto has a, yeah. a, has a lot of those studies to really look at what, that customer really how they want to how they want to do their shopping. Some yeah. of them want to want to have a vending machine where they can go and order the car that they want, have it dropped off to them. And I, I think you're right. Service on the service end, it's not going to change. The customer wants their vehicle picked up. They want it disinfected before they get it back. Um, they want to know where it is. And I think having 
somebody pick up their vehicle and then that person watching it on an app going, okay, it's going from my house and there it is at the dealership. Almost like that, almost like that app for the, where, where's my pizza, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, that brings up, um, uh, causes me to think about, you know, consumers today and, uh, everybody wants every, all of us are online shoppers more than any other single time in history. They're mm-hmm. coming to your website. They're looking for things. Now we know that the specials content page in your top level nav is where all four of your profit centers are located, new and used in parts and service. You need to have something there, whatever it is you have there, take a look at it. If it's not engaging or enticing to you, trust me, it's not to your customers either. I call it the three click rule. We're all this way. If you think about it, after three clicks, if you don't find what you're looking for exponentially, those exit rates go up with every click. You'd, you'd be astounded by the numbers on the fourth and fifth click. What, I mean, how, how, how many people leave? So you need to be able to deliver the right content, the right message with the right time. And in my opinion, uh, technology has revolutionized and changed so much that it's, it's customers, particularly the younger generation, well, and the older generation. I mean, how many of you, of course, I can't see everybody raise their hands, but <laughs> when I got a problem in my house, I'm a YouTube guy. I, got yeah. a YouTube. I can I can just about fix anything or prepare, at least cut down on the time it would take to run back and forth to Home Depot or Lowe's or, you know, whatever. So I, I would say that, uh, and then not only that, but people aren't just printing and scheduling service. I mean, yeah, I, everybody wants people to schedule service, but uh, statistically, 21% of people nationally do that. So how, how are they engaging the customers online through video content? That's exactly how it's being done. And they're saying by next year, now I mean six months away, that 82% of all consumption will be video-based consumption. So these are the things that we, sh- we should all be looking to uh, for to increase efficiencies, give our advisors some technology that they can use to send video content to their customers, either while they're in the waiting room before a scheduled appointment and or maybe after a declined op or something like that. Oh, I like that a lot. That's yeah. that's great. Yeah. Uh, so we're almost out of time here with, with the podcast and this episode, but what are three takeaways in your mind that an agent, a service person, or a dealer can learn from this episode? Um, embrace technology. Uh, guard your time wisely. Look at things that, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I thought was really good. When, when a- any dealer or fixed ops person is being pitched anything, and a lot of it's online today. So, uh, and here we are. What is it? What is it doing? What's in it for me? And if it, if, if, if it, here's what I know about anybody in the automotive industry, because we've all been there that are listening to this right now or watching this. And that is that if it, if, if it doesn't save me time, I'm out. I'm not interested. Okay. Right. If it's another thing that I have to do, if it's another username and login of the 15 I have, and I only use three of them, I'm really not interested in taking a look today. So what is really going on out there? And keep in mind, an opportunity is not an opportunity when everybody thinks it is an opportunity. They've already missed it. So that's what we specialize in is uh, video marketing, uh, content marketing, uh, SEO, Google My Business, and short little, uh, very educational uh, YouTube uh, and or videos that the consumers can watch. So when they come to a website, they don't just see three coupons. They'll see a category for brakes or uh, tires and alignments or batteries and brakes, et cetera. Those are the things consumer are looking for. And if they're there and you capture their attention, they're going to stay on that page longer. And if you give them multiple ways to convert other than just a print or a schedule service, which nobody really even tracks, I think that that is one niche of many things we could talk about, but we don't have time today. Uh, that would that would really help in the fixed ops department. I love your three takeaways, uh, Russell. Appreciate you. you being on this episode. Thank you very Russell much. Hill, co-founder of Fixed Ops Marketing. Thank mm-hmm. you for taking the time. I ask every guest this: Will you please come back? Yeah. Excellent. Thank Thanks, Corey. If anyone has any questions that is listening or watching this podcast, feel free to send me an email at csmith at nationalautocare.com. Questions, comments, if you want to be a guest on the show or have us talk about some topics. We're certainly willing to do that. Uh, The next podcast will come out on the 20th. Uh, Russell, have a wonderful rest of your week. And again, really appreciate you being a part of this podcast. Corey, thank you. And thank you everybody for listening and watching out there. Make it a great day. 
Thank you for watching and listening to National Auto Care's Fixed Ops 5 with Corey Smith, powered by Passion. Be sure to watch and listen to the next episode on the 5th and 20th of every month.